This demonstration sets us up for answering our very first question. What is the direction of the force acting on an object, keeping it moving in a circle? Well, when I rode around the outside of the merry-go-round, I was applying a force on the ball. And when I let go of the ball, that ball moved in a straight line, tangent to the circle. This ball was obeying its inertial tendency to move in a straight line when there's nothing else acting on it. Well, the same thing applies to Kate when I swing her around in a circle. When I swing her, if I were to let her go, she too would move in a straight line tangent to the circle. Well, at any given instant, it's up to me to yank her off of that straight line motion. Now I'm standing at the axis of rotation, the center of the circle. So when I yank, I'm pulling her towards the center of the circle. Put a lot of these instances together and I am constantly pulling on Kate towards the center of the circle. Well, we call center seeking forces centripetal forces. Now our next question, what is the resulting acceleration and in what direction is it? In order to look at acceleration, we need the net force. So is the centripetal force that I'm pulling on Kate with towards the center of the circle, is that the only force? Well, I want you to think about that for just a second. Well, we see that from rest up to speed, Pete accelerates both tangentially and centripetally. Well, with two acceleration vectors happening, then there must be a resultant acceleration, a total acceleration. Well, how do we determine the total acceleration if we have both tangential and centripetal accelerations? Back to the drawing board here. If this is the case, a simple picture will show you that tangential and centripetal accelerations are necessarily, ah, that's no good. Okay, hold on, here we go. All right. So if this is our motion and, we're, and we are motioning in this direction, we're moving counterclockwise, then at this point right here, we have both centripetal acceleration and tangential acceleration. And so what we see is, by definition, they have to be perpendicular. Well, if they're already and necessarily perpendicular to each other, then that makes determining the resultant acceleration super easy. Because I could take this acceleration from a vector point of view and put it head to tail over here, so it's got the same direction and same magnitude added head to tail, perpendicular to each other, such that this has to be our total acceleration. So that is our total acceleration. In order to determine the total acceleration, you have a right triangle with both pieces. You simply Pythagorize the two sides. In addition, you use an inverse tangent relationship to determine the angle. So the magnitude of the total acceleration must be the tangential, the square of the tangential, plus the square of the centripetal square root. So the square root of the sum of the squares. That's the magnitude of your total acceleration. Well, if this is how you defined your right triangle, then it would be logical for this to be theta. And if this is theta and you now know the two sides, then, th then the relationship to theta would be tangent. So you would take the inverse tangent of the side opposite, which is a sub t, divided by the side adjacent to theta, which is a sub c. And so we have an expression of determining total acceleration. So it's no worries. This is just one more step. We're just adding to our understanding of a concept that we learned already, acceleration. We just applied it to a circular motion. So you either have or don't have 
to, uh, tangential and centripetal, but you'd have the means of determining each of them. And if they both exist, you now have the means of determining their total acceleration. 